Okay. Okay. So you can see there the, the title of today's webinar is Beginner's Guide to Trading CFDs and Single Stock Futures. And there's a subtitle there. It doesn't really matter what level you are. There's always something that you can take away. So yes, the, it is aimed at the novice or the beginner, but I believe that we, we can all learn from every presentation if you might be a bit more advanced. Okay. So um, to, to kick off, like I do with every webinar, I like to start off with a little quote. And this is a quote from um, Mr. Suzuki. Okay, if I want to get to it, he's a Zen monk, not the Suzuki that started Suzuki uh, uh, Corporation. Um, he's a Zen monk and teacher. He says, if your mind is empty, it is ready for anything. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. So many beginners uh, might feel, find that uh, trading uh, CFDs and single stocks overwhelming and confusing. Um, in this webinar, my objective today is to discuss the basics um, of his ever popular trading uh, instruments number one just understand that the main thing I want to highlight for you guys is that uh, the major advantage number one is capital efficient and number two you obviously you can speculate it will take advantage of rising and falling markets but also I believe and this is going to be the main focus today is to use it as a hedging tool okay so that is just a quick introduction to uh, my, my objective today now is it just a show of hands um, you can raise your hands and things like that uh, show of hands, how many of you are feeling overwhelmed by the latest political and economic uncertainty? Let me see how many guys feel overwhelmed. You raise your hands. Okay, there's hands going up. Hey, okay, great. Cassandra's on the ball. Okay, there we go. Who else is? Who feels overwhelmed by the uncertainty on the market? Okay, John, uh, a bit uh, John's got a question here. Okay, I'll answer your questions a bit later. Okay, there's one or two guys that might feel overwhelmed by the current situation. Okay, go one step further. How many of you that are long-term investors feel compelled to sell your shares and uh, because of the market uh, market volatility? Okay, some hands coming up there also. Cool. Okay, Bongani, awesome. Okay, great. Guys, thanks for participating. I just wanted some interaction with you guys. Thank you very much. Okay, so the current situation for a lot of people, obviously, the political climate is creating a lot of uncertainty, and that uncertainty leads to volatility. So my focus today with this presentation is to show you how to use single stocks and CFDs as a hedging tool. You ought to be in a situation where you're selling the stocks, and that's going to trigger a capital gains tax event. Okay. So saying that, um, that's number one. Number two, you know, Single stocks and CFDs is not for everyone. So yes, this does come with a warning in the sense that it's not for everyone, number one. It's not for anyone that it, that is uh, does not want to be subjected to, to volatile markets, number one, and someone that does not or that wants capital protection. This is not for you then. Okay. Um, I want to aim this for the people that do have more of a long-term uh Buy and hold share portfolio, and I want to show you how to use this as a hedging tool. So, those of you that do have a a large portfolio, instead of, as I said just now, instead of having to sell and trigger a capital gains event, the ideal situation is in the situation where I call it the insurance policy, where you can hedge your portfolio. But also, I know that some of you on this on this webinar today are looking at uh, more the trading side, the speculation side. And this is the ideal situation of using these uh, called derivative products, single stocks and CFDs, where you can trade any direction. Doesn't matter what's happening with the market, you can take advantage of what's happening on the market. Okay, so this is the ideal situation where you want to use these uh, derivative products for. Yeah. So how do we get there? I'm going to go through the basics, some of the terminology. Um, so as I say, many of you, have, I saw some of you that are on this webinar now, um, or quite new to, to that. I haven't seen you before in this webinar. So we're going to discuss the basics. So the first thing we're going to discuss, and I mentioned the word now, derivative. A derivative is a security with a price that is dependent upon or derived from uh, one or more underlying assets. And obviously today we're talking about single stocks and CFDs. So we talk about equity derivatives. Okay. Two weeks' time, I'll be talking about uh, trading uh, currency futures, and we're talking about trading the Aussie and the OMI, which are market indices. But those are the underlying assets. So when it comes to derivatives, the derivative itse itself is a contract between two or more parties. In, in this situation, obviously, you as a client, a trading client, and PSG Securities. That's number one. Number two, the value 
um, is determined by the fluctuations of the underlying assets. So it, what, it depends what's happening with underlying share uh, or the currency or the, um, the market index. And it's obviously dependent on market forces, supply and demand and things like that. So you still do your homework like you do with a normal share, fundamentals and technicals around that. And I'm there to guide you along those, along those lines. So first of all, it's, we're talking about derivatives. Secondly, we understand, uh, when we talk about derivatives, underlying share, the MTNs, the first race, uh, first, uh, first rands, the Anglos, and things like that. So as the normal shares, I mentioned just now that you were doing uh, normal investing and normal trading. Secondly, we make the universe a bit smaller, more manageable. We only concentrate on the top, top 100 companies. So first of all, they're more tradable, they're more liquid. Um, so we talk about the top 100, which is broken to the top 40 large cap stocks. Um, and in the next 60 companies, what we call the, the mid-cap stocks. I'll go one step further. You can take it 40, the top 40 and break them down into top 25 industrials, top 50, uh, top 50 financials, and top, uh, top 10 resources and mining. So the idea is ultimately um, to have a watch list of the shares that you got in your portfolio. And obviously, the idea there is to have all the search linked to that. You can make more informed decisions. So just quickly to highlight it for you guys, this is what the, the top 25 industrial shares look like. You've got the NUS passes of the world, big, what I call household names, the pick and pays. Uh, we all know about the pick and pays. We know about SPA. We know about Mr. Price, uh, ShopRights, Vodacom, and things like that. So the idea is that from this, you'll be choosing shares for example, if you want to trade, if you've got these shares in your portfolio and you think they might be overvalued, and I'll be talking about it just now, that you want to be in a situation where you want to hedge yourself. So that's an example of a, the industrial top 25 uh, shares. This is a list of the top 15 financial shares. This is your banks, your listed property, your insurance companies, and things like that. Yeah. Um, you'll see that obviously there are duplications, not duplications, but they, you'll get Investec PLC and Investec um, uh, limited, so that's why you might have more than 15 years, actually 17 in year. So same with also with the uh, Fortress. Okay, but you've got a list of shares that's making the universe a bit smaller, more manageable, what to focus on. And then lastly, obviously the top 10 uh, resource and mining stocks. Uh, recently we had a good run in these stocks because of the Rand Hedge, etc. Recently with uh, what's happening in um, uh, Syria. And America and all that uncertainty into the gold prices running, so the gold stocks are running. Okay, so that's where you want to take advantage of. Okay, so saying that, um, as I say, that's the first step. Make it a bit simpler, um, the selection, but also, the, as I say, I want to discuss the terminology. So we discuss what is a derivative. You also understand that we're talking about a geared or leveraged product. So you, we were talking about it just now, but you're putting down initial margin. And you're borrowing the other 85 percent. Is it bringing down roughly about 15 percent? You're borrowing the other 85 percent, and that's where we talk about gearing. For each one cent uh, the share moves in your favor, you're multiplying the profits by up to six times. Um, so that's where the gearing comes in. So I understand um, it's a geared model, a geared uh, a product or, or leveraged product. That's number one. Number two, as I said just now, you can trade direction. You can take a view on the market. You want to go long. You want to take advantage of rising prices, or you can take advantage of falling prices. We talk about going short. Okay, I talk more about the terminology just now. We talk about going long, going short, and we talk about opening a position. Okay. Um, we talk about the spot. That would be the underlying underlying asset, the underlying share in this example. So we talk about the spot price. What is the share price trading right now? That would be the spot price. Um, with CFDs and single stocks, we talk about initial margin. So that's your minimum deposit required to open up the position. So with single stocks, so the top 40 stocks will be 15% um, margin. And the mid-cap stocks, the next 60 companies will be 17.5%. When it comes to single stocks, it's there it's based on the rand value of the contract at the time of the futures closeout. So we talk about futures closeout. Understand that single stocks um, have expiry. They have a life. I call it a life. Every, every quarter, uh, we talk about trading the, uh, uh, the third Thursday of every, every uh, quarter, be it March, June, September, and December, we have the futures close out. So right now, we are trading the June contract. But those contracts, one contract is equal to 100 shares. But those contracts also have a RAND value. It's not, not decided on, on percentage value. Okay. Um, so those are some of the differences. We'll come back to it just now. But just understand that. Both uh, CFDs and single stocks require initial margin, what we call a good faith deposit, to open up the position. And then we also have what they call mark to market. Relative to, if you had to compare uh, derivatives to, to normal trading shares, uh, you might have a paper profit, 
only when you sell the shares with that, those, that, that money be in your account, the profit or uh, be in your account. With derivatives on a daily basis, that profit and loss is a daily revaluation of, of your, of your situation. So the idea there is that, um, if your cash is negative, you'll get what we call a margin call. So that 15% margin gets ring fenced. Um, so for example, you buy the share at 10 Rand and you're just supposed to go up, goes to 11 Rand, that one Rand profit will be in your account tonight. Okay. If the market goes against you, mark to market, the market closes at 9 Rand, um, that one end difference, you need to top up. If you don't have the cash available, as I say, you'll get a margin call. And that margin call will be in your state for the next day. You got until three, uh, three or four o'clock in the next, uh, I think it's three o'clock in the afternoon to, to uh, deposit the funds in your account um, to what we call variation margin. Alternatively, if you don't have those funds available, PHG has a right to start closing out uh, some of your positions to cover that margin. The idea there is to manage the risk both on your side and PHG side. Yeah, so variation margin is what I call the, the top up. This is when the market uh, on a daily basis uh, moves in, in, in and out your favor. Um, so, and that's where we manage the the, uh, the profits and losses as a process called variation margin. Yeah, so we spoke just about opening a position and we also talk about when it comes to single stock futures, obviously when you go long, uh, you just do the opposite to close it and going short, you just do the opposite. As we talk about closing uh, a, a position. With, when it comes to single stock futures, we talk about rolling a position. So when it comes to expiry, the third Thursday of every month, the default position is PSG will automatically roll you over into the next contract. So we're trading the June contract now, we automatically roll you into the September contract. There is a, there is a, a fee for that, we call it a, a, a rolling position. Uh, fee, 0.25% of the value of the transaction, but I'll get back to it just, uh, just now. Just understand there's, there's a, a fee with that. When it comes to CFDs, uh, there we can have a bit more flexibility in the sense that you don't have to worry about closeout. So that's ideal for the position trader. Someone wants to take a bit of a longer view. When I say longer view, you might be an active investor. Okay. So that's just some of the terminology as a, as a quick introduction. I want to compare the differences. Uh, a lot of people always want to know what's the, what's the differences between the two. First, we want to understand that single stocks are regulated by the by the JSC and as well as the Financial Services Board, whereas the CFDs is unregulated. Uh, I know that the JSC has their own version of CFDs uh, called eCFDs. Uh, the CFDs that PSG trades, we trade that OTC. So it's over the counter. So um, What's happening with single stocks, they're guaranteed by the, the uh, South Africa Futures Exchange Commission, whereas with CFDs, it's guaranteed by PSG. Okay, so that's a big thing, that, uh, the big differences between the two of them. When it comes to dealing costs, um, the, the brokerage fee is exactly the same, 0.4%. Anything with single stocks is additional fee of what you call the booking fee. Um, and I'll discuss it in the next slide. Uh, with CFDs, there's obviously no booking fee. You save your, your cost there. When it comes to single stock futures, if you want to go short, there's no cost. With CFD, however, there's a cost, 1.5% per annum of the value of the transaction of the minimum of being, being 250. Um, as I say, with single stocks, there's an expiry, and there's that rollover cost I was mentioning just now. With CFDs, there's no, there's no, uh, expiry. In other words, you can save yourself 1% if you had a, a, whole, a longer term. I mentioned just now about initial margin putting down roughly about 15% and borrowing the other 85%. So yeah, we're talking about you're borrowing at wholesale interest rates, which is much cheaper than going to the banks. Okay, so that's the big difference also. It's, we talk about uh, SAFX minus two. SAFX rate is, you can loosely compare it to prime, which is what, about 10 and a half percent, less 2%. So it could cost you 8 and a half percent, of, of eight and a half percent per annum. So it depends how long you, and then obviously that's charged daily. Uh, it depends how long you hold a position open. When it comes to single stock futures, we trade what we call dividend neutral contracts. So the, the dividends is priced into the price, it was priced into the price already. Whereas with CFDs, you actually receive the synthetic dividend. When I say synthetic dividend, you're not a, a shareholder. Both for single stocks and CFD, you can have a hundred contracts or a thousand shares on, on SASL. You're not a shareholder. So, um, this is what we talk about be, uh, receiving a synthetic dividend. So they'll be in your account. Obviously, that's after dividend withholding tax and things like that. With single stocks, you decide, okay, um, I'm going to buy uh, 10 contracts on on NASPAS. Um, you can actually take physical delivery of it. 
uh, when it comes to physical to close out, instead of uh, closing it out, you say, okay, I want to take physical de physical delivery. As long as you've got the cash available in your account to pay the difference, you can take physical delivery of uh, the the NASPAS shares or the single stock futures. With CFDs, you cannot take advantage of, C of, of physical delivery. Okay, so those are some of the big differences as such. Um, let's get into the CFDs. Um, as I mentioned just now, there are differences when it comes to the minimum transaction value. Uh, we have a, a minimum transaction value of 25,000. Less than that, it's not economically viable for you to open up a position. So if it's 25,000 and it's a top 40 stock, 15% margin on that, the minimum you need to put down as a, as a good faith deposit is 3,750 rand. For a mid-cap stock, 17.5%, we require a slightly higher margin. Okay. Um, as I said, just now, the big difference there, you receive a synthetic dividend and you're not a shoulder um, with CFDs. Okay. Let's talk about how do, if you had to compare it now to a share, what's the advantages? So on the left-hand side here, we've got a share trader. He's op, uh, optimistic that actual share price will increase in value. She has 40,000 rand, which, which, she, which she wants to invest. Sassel share price recently traded around about 400 rand a share. She goes by 100 shares. I'll just keep it simple. There's no brokerage fee involved here. So the value of the transaction is 40,000. Three months later, the share price has gone up by 10%. Frankly, she's, she's made uh, uh, 4,000 rand profit. Uh, she decides to sell out the shares. Her return on her investment is 10%. As an investor, 10% over three months analyzed uh, is 40% per annum. So as an investor, she's doing pretty well. Okay, I don't think anybody will, will say, uh, pull the nose up at that kind of uh, uh, returns. However, if you look at the same scenario of a CFD trader, so it's also optimistic, so looking at the same scenarios, Sassel shares price is going up. Um, also, the share price is trading at 400 Rand. Guys and buyers, exactly the same thing, 100 shares in uh, in um, in Sassel, the exposure is exactly the same, 40,000. However, the difference comes in with the money you're putting down yourself. In this scenario, Sassel, 15% of 40,000, I'm putting down 6,000 Rand as initial uh, margin. Three months later, the share price has gone up. Remember, on a daily basis, the profit and losses will be in your account. Okay, we will see it with, as an equity trader, it's a paper profit until such time you sell. In this scenario, I close out exactly the same scenario, that 4,000 and profit as a percentage of my margin in this scenario, 66%. And that's what makes it so attractive to a lot of people because it's very capital efficient. I can use my other funds for other positions. So I hope that highlights for you the big advantage of, of CFD is capital efficiency. Okay, so let's talk about single stock futures. As I mentioned just now, the brokerage is exactly the same for single stocks and CFD, 0.4% excluding VAT on the value of the transaction. With, um, C with CFDs, it's just brokerage plus VAT. So brokerage, 0.4% plus 14% uh, VAT on the opening leg and the closing leg. So it's a very simple uh, 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 instrument to, to, to trade. When it comes to single stock futures, there's additional costs. As I say, first of all, there's a market maker's fee of 0.1%. It's also included in the price. So as a scenario, when we talk about brokerage, 0.5%. Or is there, with the VAT, 0.57%. And then we also have what they call the booking fee. This is charged per contract when the position is open. So you only pay that once on the opening leg. So I buy Sassel 10 times a day, you only pay it once. But I buy, buy, buy it today and I buy it tomorrow, just understand you'll be paying that, brokerage, that uh, booking fee twice. So that's um, when we talk about brokerage as such. Okay. Um, when it comes to interest and things like that, I mentioned just now that we talk, we talk about interest being paid um, on the cost value of, or the, the cost value of the um, transaction. That's determined daily, and that's by the ruling suffix rates. As I say, roughly about eight and a half percent per annum. Obviously, as on CFDs or single stocks, it's going through the market makers. It's a bit more competitive, and obviously uh, much less. That margin you're putting down, you also earn interest on that money. That money is always yours. And when you close out the position, your margin comes back to you as a deposit. But that you earn interest on that, and that's at the JC Trustees rate, which is around about five percent at the moment. Okay, so let's look at some examples uh, and uh, what I want to highlight today, how to use these instruments as a hedging tool. So here we've got a scenario. Way back in 2003, you bought some um, some NASPAS shares. Okay, let's say example, you bought 500 shares. Um, at that point in time, it was 29 rand 20. So your, your transaction value at that point in time was 146 rand. Right now, if, 
uh, yesterday the share price closed at uh, 2,492 rand a share. So your share has gone has grown up nice has, has gone up nicely. But you might be in a situation now. You might be thinking, well, the share is overvalued. Should I be selling? Should I lock in my profits? If I do sell, what's going to happen with uh, with, with capital gains tax? So. When it comes to capital gains tax, you must understand the difference in this scenario is 1,100 rand. Okay, your first 40,000 rand is exempt from tax. So we talk about taxable tax gains roughly about a million, and we talk about the inclusion rate, which is 45% of your 40%. Um, so in this scenario, we talk about 18% tax on that. So if you had a sell out in this scenario on your for over a million rand profit, uh, you'd be paying 190,000 rand in capital gains tax. That's ouch. Okay, so what I what we're suggesting is maybe looking at opening up a hedge to hedge your, your, your scenario. So exactly the same scenario. So on my equity side, if I bring in my little cursor here quickly, um, my spotlight. So on this side here is my open up my, my position. I've got 500 uh, shares in NASPAS. I might be anticipating where it is now. What happens if the share price drops 200 rand a share? It can easily drop 10, uh, 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 1 percent. Um, uh, even a bit more than that, but in this scenario, I've got a potential of not only having capital gains, but also um, obviously the share price being lower. I've got a potential of making 100,000. Remember, this is for education purposes. I just want to highlight for you what happens with a hedge. So with a single stock futures, I can go open up, taking out five contracts. Five contracts, each contract's 100 shares is exactly the same scenario. Share price drops by, by 200 rand. What I lose in the swings, I make up in the roundabouts. So this is what we call a perfect hedge. The only difference is would be your brokerage fees and things like that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. This is how you can still have your share portfolio, lock in your profits, uh, but also if the price drops, uh, we're not worried about it because, as I say, what, what you lose in the equities, you're making up on on the on the on the single stock future side. That's number one. Number two, you're also avoiding paying capital gains. You're not selling anything. Okay. So I hope that uh, that helps you. So some of you might be thinking about if, what happens if I go short on, on CFDs? And I mentioned just now that's crypt lending fee. It's 1.5% per annum. Yes, there might be a, a, a fee in there. But you also understand if single stocks, there's that fee there. So it's, it's, it's six and a half dozen of the other. Okay, there's pros and cons of each one of them. But the main idea here is to use it as a hedging tool to lock in your profits and um, not be in a situation where you're panicking about, uh, about the scenario. Okay, let me just go back to my cursor again. Cool. So, what are the advantages? What will these uh, uh, equity derivatives do for you? As I mentioned this just now, first of all, it gives you the opportunity to hedge your portfolio. It's going to help you avoid paying capital gains tax. As I showed you just now, it's a highly capital efficient way to participate in the market, number one. Number two, uh, as I say, it's a very cost effective way to gain exposure to the market. And because we're dealing with the top 40 or the top 100 stocks, they're very liquid and easily tradable. You'll be able to get out of your position very quickly if you're looking at the trading side. And in the next few slides, we'll, we'll talk more about the trading. Um, and also, obviously, as I said, you can benefit from downward movement in price if you want to take advantage as a trader. Um, the pricing is very, very transparent. Uh, that's number one. And number two is obviously the wholesale interest rates are used. Yeah, so those are the, the benefits of getting involved with this. So you guys might have some considerations. I've been talking about the hedging. What about the traders? So let's talk about the traders. Two scenarios. Um, you want to go long. Here's an example of a long trade on Kumba. Now, this is a strategy, what I call uh, high probability trading. I use um, uh, breakout, what I call breakout strategy. I look for sideways market. So yeah, we've got a breakout above a resistance level. So in this scenario, this is where you want to go long. So when it breaks out above your resistance level, you would have gone, your entry price would have been at 173. Uh, and the nice thing about using chart patterns like a rectangle here, I can measure the difference in, the, in this scenario. And this scenario is, tw say, to example, 200 Rand. I add on to my breakout of my entry price, so my target is 193. Just a, 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 a practical example. My stop loss in this scenario, some of you might put your stop right at the bottom here below the stop. Below the uh, support level, I like to use the moving averages. This this example is a fifth day moving average. So the difference between my entry price and my, my, my stop loss in this scenario is 10 Rand. Okay. So we talk about position sizing and we talk about stop loss. That's how we talk about risk management. So in this scenario, our risk management is 10 Rand a share. Our reward is, is uh, two rand a sh uh, 20 Rand a share. My risk reward ratio should never be less than one to two. I'm willing to risk one rand to make two rand. So 
based on my my profit and this scenario I've got a potential reward of 11 rand 56 so the idea here when it comes to position sizing how did I decide on it and this is what I suggest also if you're considering CFDs if you've got a long-term portfolio, it's a great hedging tool. If you consider it as a, as, a, as a trading opportunity, as I said just now, it's not for everybody. I really recommend it for someone who's got 100,000 plus because it gives you more flexibility, especially when it comes to position sizing. With 100,000, you might decide, okay, um, and this is, if you look at all the textbooks, I always talk about 2% um, risk per, per trade. So 2% of, of, of 100,000 is 2,000 Rand. Divide your 2,000 Rand by your... Um, by your stop loss in this scenario, 10 Rand. In this scenario, I can go buy two, uh, uh, 200 shares. My 200 shares with my CFD is trading at 173 Rand. My exposure is 34,600 Rand. I didn't need to put down an initial margin. This is a mid cap stock of 6,055 Rand. Um, and this is how you set up the trade. So on the next slide, you'll see the actual breakdown. So it brings also the cost. So this is my CFD trade. I'm going long, and that's where I got at 200 shares from. Is that position sizing that 2% of my 100,000 divided by my stop loss? So the share price is trading 173. My underlying exposure is 34,000. As I say, the initial margin is uh, 6,000 rand. And how do I get that? Is by um, 17.5%. You'll see if you look at our top 100 list on our website, um, you'll be able to see the margin required there. The cost of the transaction is, as I say, 0.4% plus VAT. So there's the 0.4%, the, the brokerage plus the VAT. In this scenario, to open up the transaction, uh, the opening leg would have cost me 157 Rand to have the exposure of 34,000. I close out the position. My value of the transaction is at 193. So the, the, the exposure is 38. To my, my brokerage is 176, so you can see the difference is 4,000 Rand. 4,000 Rand less my brokerage in this scenario divided by my initial margin. That's how we get to that potential 60%. That's how a trade would work. Okay, that's using an example of a of, C, of CFDs. Now let's look at C, at single stock futures. In, in this scenario, I'm using standoff and falling market, so we're taking advantage of falling prices. Remember, you, with CFDs, or going long, I buy something at five rand, I sell at ten rand, I make five rand profit, and that's how I take advantage of, of a long position. In the falling in the falling market, if I want to go short, I sell at ten rand and I buy back at five rand. I'm still making my five rand difference. That's the difference between taking advantage of longs and shorts. So this. Same scenario here, I decided, okay, breakout below support level, uh, just for, for education purposes, I would have got into the trade at 76 Rand, my stop would have been slightly bit, a bit uh, higher than that, to 78, so I always suggest that you always get your stop from the, the, the charts. So this scenario, my stop loss is 2 Rand per share, okay, the difference between my entry price and my stop is 2 Rand per share, uh, the difference between... Um, Support and resistance there, or well, those two scenarios there, I'm working on a, on, on 11 and a share. So this is how we'll calculate uh, my target price from there. But I'm taking advantage of falling prices. By the way, anything below 200 day moving average, we consider it the probabilities of the trend okay on, of, of doing that. Okay, so this on the, the logistics, the numbers behind it. Yeah, I'm talking about single stock futures. So we're talking about uh, trading um, 10 contracts, how do I get to it? Again, my 100,000 divided uh, my 2% on that is 2,000 Rand. So in this scenario, my risk is 2 Rand, divide my 2 Rand into my 2,000 shares, uh, and that's how I get my, 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 my sorry, my 1,000 shares, that's how I get my 10 contracts. So the share price value in this transaction was 76 Rand, my exposure was 76,000, my initial margin, and that's what comes through on, from the, on the website to give you the initial margin per share, uh, and that's 9,810 Rand. Okay, so in my brokerage fee, 0.4%, plus the booking fee, plus the market makers, the 493, to close out a position, exactly the same thing. Remember, I don't pay the booking fee, but this is how the mechanics would work. Okay, I'm going through this very fast so we can get to the questions. Remember, when it comes to me setting out the presentation, review through this and you'll have a lot of questions, and that's where I encourage you to please contact me if you've got any questions regarding the, the process. Okay, so let's look at the questions. What guys, what, what, what questions you guys might have? Okay. Okay, what is a market maker? Great questions. Thanks, Cassandra. Market maker uh, on the single stock future side. 
Um, they make the markets, usually the banks, be it Macquarie or RMB, uh, they make the market. So they'll take both sides of the market. There's always a willing buyer and always a willing seller. So that's what a market maker would be, as I say, usually the banks. Okay. Dr. Fulian, no questions, no problem. Okay. I hope that uh, presentation answered all your questions. Awesome. Great. What other questions you guys have? No questions. Awesome. There we go. Here's a question from Tabor. Uh, okay, just let me keep. keep uh, Okay, is it allowed for one to have a long stock and a short, a long stock and a short position on CFD on the same stock? Uh, you're taking a bit of what they, what they call a straddle there. You, uh, you, know, you've, yeah, it's um, in a situation where you don't know which way the market's going, so you need to take a position. Yeah, you can do it, but uh, I don't understand why you would do that. Not to have single stocks and CFDs. Okay. Okay. As a, 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 Question from Terry Cousins. Good question, Terry. Do I need to separate accounts for CFD and single stocks? Yes. Uh, you need to register for CFD accounts, a separate mandate for CFDs and a separate mandate for single stocks. Um, obviously, the risks are separate. Together, the two accounts together, we lie up to a million rand exposure without asking for a, a balance sheet. But yes, you do need to register for, for both of them separately, Terry. Great question. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's a question here from Sufasili. Uh, please repeat where, where did I get the stop from on my charts? You take it from your charts, be it a moving average or be it a support resistance level, but you take it from your charts. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, what is the correct amount to start with? Good question also. Um, we'll see if, if you don't have a, 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 a large portfolio of us and you look at more the trading side, I sincerely recommend a good amount is 100,000 because that flexibility gives you that with that position sizing. Um, less than that, obviously, you've got less flexibility, so 100,000 plus. Okay, if you've got less than that, then you need to be a serious, uh, you need to know what you're doing as a trader um, and manage those risks. Okay, so it looks like it's all the questions, guys. Just to wrap it up quickly, and I appreciate all those questions. Thank you very much. Let me just wrap it up quickly. I've uh, gone over a bit of time. Um, in conclusion, uh, remember, it's a geared product. You put, put down initial margin to have full 100% exposure. Understand that variation margin on a daily basis, uh, that's where you need to top up. It's managing that variation margin too. But the advantages, it's a capital efficient product. It's low trading fees, but also, and, and my focus today was a hedging tool. Those of you who have large share portfolios, consider using CFDs and single stocks. Instead of having to trigger capital gains and, and selling out your shares, consider using this as a tool. But please contact me. Um, any questions you guys might have, there's my, my contact details, and I'm there to help you. Thank you very, very much for your time. As I said, the presentation will be sent out to you guys either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. From my side, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.